Hey everyone, it's time for another quick update this week. Coming up on this episode, a mini tour to the Maritimes. Second, Mark wants to hear from you. And a letter to the editor that's forcing pro-abortion advocates to respond. Anna joins us for that segment. First up then, are you ready for what's coming? That's the topic of ARPA Canada's first mini tour to the Maritimes this June. We're stopping in three provinces, holding meetings with locals and hosting evening presentations along the way. On June 5th, we'll be in Cambridge Station, Nova Scotia, with coffee starting at 7 p.m. And June 6th, we will be in Charlottetown, also starting at 7 p.m., kicking off both those presentations at 7.30. I'll be talking about the church in a post-truth culture. My colleague Andre Schutten will speak on recent religious freedom challenges. And Mike Schutten will be presenting on preborn human rights in Canada. We'd love to see you there. For more, go to arpacanada.ca slash maritimes2019. Next up, Mark is joining us to talk about a survey that we'd like your help with. Thanks, Colin. If you're like me, you probably ignore most online surveys you get. Well, I'm hoping all of you will make one important exception, because for the next two weeks, ARPA's looking for your feedback about our work through a survey. This feedback is going to be shared with our board and our staff as we prepare our next strategic plan. And that matters because it's this strategic plan that directs ARPA's activities over the next three or more years. So how important are our legal interventions in courts? Or are we need a law campaign? What do you think of these quick update videos? And did you notice Colin's amazing color changing tie? It only takes about 10 or 12 minutes to share your anonymous thoughts on important questions like these. Just go to arpacanada.ca for the link to the survey. Thank you very much for helping us as we plan for the future. Thanks, Mark. Up next, Ananine Heiss is a policy and research coordinator for We Need a Law. She recently had a letter to the editor published that has pro-abortion activists jumping to respond. Yeah, hi, Colin. As soon as I started seeing the coverage about Greg Ottenbright coming out of Saskatchewan, I wanted to write this article. It was just so interesting to see that this pro-life MLA in his rural riding in Saskatchewan, he spoke to a small pro-life group at an event they hosted, and he just come, came under this massive attack nationally and provincially. People were calling for his resignation. They were attacking his ability to represent Canadians, his ability to be a health minister, all kinds of things. And it's just so interesting to see this small thing get so noticed by abortion activists, and it just shows how closely they're watching pro-life politicians. So this was just a really good opportunity when the media was covering it to turn that story and say, why are abortion activists so worried? Why are they so nervous when someone talks about things they disagree with? And we see then that they don't really feel strength in their position, that they are nervous and that they know the pro-life movement in Canada is ready for this. We want to have this discussion and there are no cracks in our consensus. We know exactly what we're fighting for. And it was great to see the Regina Leader Post publish this piece and be able to share that perspective as well. Thanks, Anna. Great work on that letter. And remember, you can also send a letter to your local newspaper at any time in response to these issues. It's a great way to be heard in your community. That's all for this week. Thanks again for watching Quick Updates. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.